Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my palette that I built on Colourpop. They have this section on their site where you can customize and build your own palette. And a lot of you guys have been requesting for me to do this and I finally did. This is my palette here. I feel like a lot of you guys are curious to see the kind of shades that I would pick out. And a lot of you guys do ask me what single shadows I would recommend. I personally don't own a lot to recommend any. I'm going to explain why I chose the shades that I did. And I'm also going to show you three looks with this palette. So if you guys are interested then just continue watching okay so this is my palette here I went with the 12 eyeshadow and 12 cheek palette and this is 46 US dollars and originally it's 85 US dollars also the pan size of the eyeshadows are a lot bigger than the eyeshadow palette so if it does sound expensive to you like 12 eyeshadows and three cheek products for like 46 dollars when you can get 12 eyeshadows off Colourpop in a palette that's I think 16 US dollars the pan Pan size is a lot bigger than the pans in the actual palettes. For my eyeshadows, I actually have eight mattes, one satin, and three metallics. I'm sure you guys aren't surprised by the amount of mattes that I have because I always say that I want more mattes than shimmers, so that's what I exactly did. I got a highlighter, a blush, and a bronzer. So now that you guys have seen my palette in more detail and seen it swatch one by one, I just want to talk about my thoughts on building my palette and the whole process on it and if I would recommend it and if it's worth it. So me building the palette, honestly, I'm not a person that likes single shadows. I personally like a palette that's already curated for me to use and like there's a whole color theme with it. I just find that picking out single shadows and placing it in empty pans, it's very overwhelming for me. I feel like the little picture that they have of the shades when you pick it out it's not exactly how it is in person unless you do your further research and look at the swatches or actually like open a new tab and search the actual shade name so you can actually see it swatch but I was literally just going off the little swatch photo picture that they had while I was building the palette but for the most part I am happy with the palette that I got there's a couple things that I probably would change so for the eyeshadows I am pretty good with the shade range that I got. I mean, I got a lot of mattes. I feel like I got a little bit too many transitional shadows, but nonetheless, they're always useful, so it doesn't really matter. I think Koi and Tiki is a little bit too similar. I feel like I should have gotten a, like a medium brown or something else. They are too similar on the eyes. 
I would have changed that. I probably would get rid of this shade as well, which is called Upon a Star. I feel like it doesn't really suit me, so I probably would have exchanged that. I don't really like this shade here either. This one is called Blowfish. This is the only satin. I love ColourPop's like satin formula, but this shade, it just looks too pale of a yellow gold that I don't even know how I would work that. I thought it'd be a bit more champagne. Eyeshadow wise, those three are like the complaints that I have. A lot of you guys asked me what would I create with ColourPop if I ever got the chance to. It wouldn't look like this. The finishes, it would look like this. There would be a lot more mattes and less shimmers. I also think the range that you can choose from, I think they are good, but I feel like there was some stuff that I was missing. But that's just honestly personal preference and what you want in a palette. As for the cheek products, the one that I like the most is actually the highlighter. I really like the highlighter. It's a little bit more... Um, how would you describe it? A little bit, I wouldn't say it's as metallic. There's a little bit of glitter specks in there, but it's very, very fine glitter. It's not a very chunky, glittery highlight. So this is really pretty. I really like this. I got the shade Boy Next Door. So that one is really, really pretty. As for the bronzer, I feel like ColourPop's pressed bronzers, you've got to really build them on. And it's just too sheer for me. I wish I got a darker shade. As for the blush, I also like the blush as well. It does have a bit of a sheen to the blush. It's not a complete matte. So when you put it on, you almost get like a light highlight as well. For certain looks, I would like that. But for the most part, if it was going to be in my palette, I would have just gotten a matte blush. And if it was a little bit darker, I think that would look nicer as well. So these two shades I wish I just got a little bit darker. But overall, I would say I'm like 85% happy with my palette. I think the value on this is amazing. You are saving like $40 on it. The pan size are bigger and it's going to be shades that you would want to wear because you are picking it out yourself. So hopefully this video can be helpful towards you guys. If you wanted any of these shades, you can see it swatched in my video. That way it's a little bit more helpful than just seeing it online because sometimes the swatches online can be a little bit deceiving. And also in my video, it can be a little bit deceiving. I have lighting going on, the contrast is up on my camera so just take it with a grain of salt but I guess you guys will get more of a general gist of what the shades would look like but yeah it was fun to be the creator and just choose the shade range that I like but yeah I'm happy with my experience they have different magnetic palettes for this this is just the one that I saw that they had so I just got this one but they have a bunch of beautiful designs for the palettes as well Firstly, I'm taking the shade Tiki and I'm going to be using this as my transition shadow. This shade is a little bit more sheer, so you definitely need to build it up. It doesn't come off as pigmented like other ColourPop eyeshadows, but it is a really pretty transitional shadow. It's like a very orangey yellow. So I'm just going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. Next, I'm going to be taking the shade Top Notch and I'm going to be applying this shade all over my lid space. I'm going to focus it close to my lash line first and then I'll slowly bring that towards my crease area. I don't want to overtake Tiki, which was our transitional shadow, so I just want to keep that a little bit lower. We want somewhat of a gradient from light to dark. Top Notch is actually a really, really beautiful shade. These are the kind of shades that I lean towards. It's very soft and muted. The undertone of it is very warm. Now taking the shade Feathered, I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing we did with Top Notch but I'm going to be using a smaller brush and I'm going to be focusing it a lot lower onto my lid, really close to my lash line. I'm not going to bring it all the way up into my crease. Like I mentioned before, we want that light to dark gradient. This one on my eyes using it today, it was a little bit patchy but nothing too serious. You will see in some areas it is a little bit darker than others. That could honestly be a user's error, like I might not be using the right brush for this. It honestly doesn't bother me too much, but I thought I would just mention that anyway. And now I'm taking the shade Boxer and I'm going to be using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right on top of Feather just all over my lid. I'm going to focus this on my lid space first and then around the edges around my crease I'm going to feather that out. I'm just making it look very diffused. I don't want this to be precise. I just want it to be diffused and soft on the eyes. I love these dark brown bronzy shades. They are definitely a favorite of mine and I love how Boxer looks. 
Now I'm taking the shade Con Jaw Up. This is going to go on my lower lash line. I'm literally just going to use this shade only on my lower lash. So I'm just going to really diffuse it out. Bringing it a little bit lower than usual, I would say. I just want this look to look very dark and smoky and sexy. So I'm just going to smoke that all over my lower lash line right from the outer corner to the inner corner. To add on top of that, I'm going to be using the Creme Gel Liner from Colourpop in the shade Fastlane and I'm going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline. The Fastlane Creme Gel Liner is literally exactly the same colour as Conjure Up, like well almost exactly the same, they're both like a dark emerald teal green. So this is the final result for this look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For my lashes, I am wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. And for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the Luxe Lipstick in the shade Layover. This look is very easy to do, but I still feel like it gives off a statement with the green lower lash line with the pop of color. It just makes it a little bit more edgier, something a little bit different, but still very subtle and wearable at the same time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look as well. Getting started with the shade Hear Me Out, I'm going to use this to set down my concealer which acts as my eye base. I am using this for all the looks so if I did miss it out I probably just forgot to mention it. But I will be using this shadow to set down my concealer for all three looks. Next, I'm going into the shade Koi, and this is going to be my transitional shadow. I'm just going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions, and I'm going to blend that towards the brow bone area. This is a really beautiful warm orangey yellow transition color. I feel like if you want to do a warm look, this is a great transitional color to have. I'm then going into the shade Top Notch and I'm going to place that in my outer third. Just really smoking that one out and just making sure most of the darkness is at the outer corner. This is the technique that I always do where I have the outer corner very dark and sultry but the inner corner is more lighter. And I'm also going to run this on my lower lash line all the way from the outer corner to inner corner. And at the outer corner making sure we're connecting the eyeshadows. Then I'm going into the shade Feathered and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing but I will be using a much smaller brush and I'm going to focus it in a smaller area to make the look even more smoky. I'm also going to bring this shadow on my lower lash line as well but I'm only going to focus it at the outer third of my eye. Going in with Let's Do It, I'm going to be deepening everything up once again. We are just working in baby steps. You can see we're working from lightest to darkest. And I'm mainly going to put this near my like lash line at the outer third. And I'm also going to bring it down to my lower lash, just pushing it up against that outer corner. And now I'm taking the shade Save It For Later. I will be using this shadow wet, but we are going to place that right at the inner corner of our lip space. I'm going to feather it out around the crease area. I don't want it to be very precise. I want it to be diffused again. I've just been liking this look. If you can tell, I haven't been doing that many cut creases recently. I just like this diffused, soft look.
So this look is now completed. For my lashes, I am wearing the Kiss Lashes in the style Ritzy. And for my lip pairing, I am wearing the Lux Lipstick in the shade Hey Mr. DJ. I know this look is very simple and it's a technique that I do all the time, but this is definitely a look that I would wear using this palette very often. I feel like out of all of the three looks, this is the look that I would probably create most out of this one palette. First, I'm going to start off with the shade Note to Self and I'm going to apply this all over my lid space, blending that towards the crease area. I'm not going to put this straight into my crease just because I don't want it too high up. I just kind of want a wash of color all over my lid space. I'll also take this shade onto my lower lash line as well, but I'm only going to focus it at the outer third of my lower lash line. I'm not going to bring it all the way in. I want to keep the lower lash line a little bit more open, more wide awake. And then I'll go in with the top notch. I'm going to take this on a pencil brush and I'm just going to run this on my upper lash line just to deepen up the lash line a little bit more, creating more depth around that area. And again, just bringing that down to my lower lash line, but just at the outer third. Now using the shade Let's Do It, I'm going to use this as my liner. I'm going to actually smoke it out against my lash line. Creating darkness around the lash line is going to make your lashes appear fuller and that's what I need since I am not applying any false lashes. And I'm also going to take this on my lower lash line as well but I'm going to take like the tiniest bit and I'm just going to put it right at the outer corner like just a teeny tiny smudge of it. Now I'm going to use the shade Blowfish and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners and also the inner third of my lower lash line where we didn't put any product earlier. I'm actually going to apply this and then I'm going to take a cotton bud and kind of rub some of it off. I just want a very sheer sheen for my inner corner highlight today. I feel like applying it directly was a little bit too intense. So this guys is the completed look. For my lip color, I am wearing the Velvet Blur Luxe Lipstick in the shade Solo. This is definitely a look that I would wear when I'm going to work. It's just very minimal, very subtle, but it still gives definition to the eyes. Alright guys, so that completes today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you found it helpful. Comment down below if you guys have already built your own palette. Are there any other single eyeshadows or cheek products that you think I should try out and maybe build another palette? Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear it. But with that being said, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!